Hey folks, welcome to Wednesday night. Good news Wednesday. Here we are. I'm living proof of God's goodness. I hope you are too. He saved me when I couldn't be saved by anything else. So we're glad. Hey, I, I hope you got to see a Sunday morning live stream if you weren't here. If you didn't didn't get that to see that, get online and see that message. Uh, Neil Childs brought a great message of how to stay focused and uh, stay focused in our Christian life and, and not to get off of distractions. And it brought me back to a message that I've, I've brought a few times before, which is running your uh, race with endurance. How I many of you know we have to have endurance to run this life? We're living for God's purposes and living a life full of that. And uh, you know, my, one of my favorite scriptures, and I've said it many times, is Colossians 3, 23 and 24. It says, do all you do as unto the Lord heartily, <laughs> heartily run your race, passionately run your race, for it is he that rewards and, and uh, uh, is the one that rewards us in the end, amen? So we run our race uh, for him. We run our race for him. But in, in, uh, over in Luke 5, 4 through 7, and you can read it, he said, Jesus told the men to launch out into the deep for a catch and get out where the fish are. How many of you know where to get out where the fish are? But then later on, after they, the boat had sunk, just about sunk with the, all the fish that they had uh, caught, he says, from now on, you will catch men. How many of you know where to be fishers of men? But we can't do that if we don't run our race with endurance. Brings me back to a story that I really enjoy because I like to see stories of that people that have done great things and endured uh, hard times in life and, and struggles in life. And it's about Sir Ernest Shackleton. Uh, he was born or he, in 1904 or 1914, he took a, a, a trip uh, to Saint, uh, Antarctica with a crew of 28. And I like what he said when he, when he said that uh, his advertisement for the crew was, men wanted for dangerous journey, low wages, long months of darkness, chance of not returning. But if successful, <laughs> honor, respect, and rewards. So we run our race like that. But he took off uh, from uh, St. George and Islands in the Falklands and on a ship called Endurance. And he went 100 miles from Antarctica, the ice, he got stuck in the ice and the ship froze up. And for the next nine months, they were stranded in the ice in Antarctica. And uh, then in November 1915, the ice crushed the ship and it sank. But they survived and they walked 400 miles across the ice till they got to land or till they got uh, to where they could stop. And then 497 days, to Elephant Island. Now they're, they're on this island and Shackleton and five others at this time set out for St. George on a small boat. And they dragged three boats with them across there, but they took off, traveled 800 miles against fear, uh, uh, fierce seas 17 days later. And a year and a half later, they arrived at St. George. They went back and re recovered their whole crew not one of them was, was uh, uh, lost and uh, in bad conditions. But the key was, even though the ship sank, it says Shackleton was a man of purpose and passion, and, and, but his spirit was unsinkable, even though his ship had went down. We're not meant to trudge through this life and just barely get through this life and not have and be victims of our problems. We're in, equipped by God for the journey. How many of you are, know we're on a journey? <laughs> equipped to overcome circumstances. Christ in us has become the hope of glory. Amen. Equipped to run our race to the end with endurance. Equipped to catch men and women for the kingdom of God. That's, that's our purpose. Over in Isaiah, you know this scripture, Isaiah 40, uh, uh, verse 29 and 31. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, sometimes we get down. This, this life is not easy, and especially right now, you may be going through something other than the COVID-19. You must, might have struggles that, 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 that have dragged you down. But you know what? The Lord will sustain us at all times. He'll give us strength to carry on. Amen? And sometimes we fall. Sometimes we have failures in our life. And, but the Word teaches us to depend on God but we have to have humility. In other words, we have to go to him with our problems, with our cares and all those things. And we have to make course corrections sometimes. How many of you know when you're with the Navy and a ship, I was on, I was on a carrier and we were going to, all the time we're making course corrections to get to our destination. And so we have to do that too as Christians. Sometimes we have to make a course correction. That's why we need the word of God because it'll help us. The word of God is alive. It'll direct us. And, and we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us that will lead and guide us into all truth. Show us things to come. Show us where we need to be going. Amen? But we need to persevere and endure. Endurance, power of enduring, an unpleasant or difficult uh, process or a, a substitution or a solution without giving way. In other words, we got problems, got things going on, but we're to endure, we're to persevere. And we're to be passionate people. Persist when the going gets tough. The old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, that's what we're to do as Christians, especially in this day and this hour. We're never to lose heart. Jesus said over in Luke 18, 1, pray and not lose heart. Men ought always to pray and not give up and give in. We know that's uh, what God wants us to do in this day and this hour. And we may get down. You may be down tonight, but I want to encourage you. David encouraged himself in the Lord. How many of you know we need people to encourage us? We, we should be an encouragers. Everywhere we go, we ought to be talking about what God has done for us and will do for us if we'll just follow him. We need to encourage one another. But you know, if nobody else is around, you can encourage yourself. Because when David encouraged himself, everybody was coming against him. They were ready to do him in because of what had happened to his fam their families and, and their goods and all that. But listen, it says for the righteous in Proverbs 24, 16, the righteous may fall seven times, but they rise up. If you're down tonight, get up, get up. Tell yourself, the, Lord, the, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I can do all things. How many of you know you can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you? And in uh, Romans 12, 11, it says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We're to be on fire for the things of God. Listen, when you stir yourself, that's why, that's why Paul reminded Timothy to stir himself up. He hadn't given, been given a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You stir yourself up in, the, in that gift that's been placed in you. We have a gift of the Holy Spirit in us. We have the fire of the Holy Ghost right here in our belly, and we stir ourselves. Well, how do you stir yourself, Mike? You begin to talk about the goodness of God. You begin to speak his word. You begin to praise him. You begin to magnify him over every situation that comes in your life. Listen, we have to have an eternal outlook, a Christian worldview. We need a Christian worldview and an eternal outlook. Shackleton was headed for home. When he, he wasn't about to give up and let his men die out there, he was headed for home. How many of you know we're headed for home? Heaven is our home. We press on for heaven. That's our home. We press on for the, the joy that's laying, waiting for us, just like it was waiting for Jesus. In Philippians 3.20, it says, our citizenship is in heaven, strangers and pilgrims in this land. We're ambassadors but in this land right now. Heaven is our true home. We're just passing through. But Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I press on. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. But he said just before that, forgetting those things that lie behind. Sometimes we can, our past will hold us hostage about what, you know, for pressing on for what God has for us. He said, I press on. He said he, he wasn't even going to look at the good times or the bad or anything he had done that was, would, uh, was uh, bad or anything he'd done that was so gracious and good. He said, I'm, I'm forgetting those things that lie behind. I'm pressing on. I'm going forward. I'm not stopping here. He said, it goes on to say Hebrews 10, 35 through 39. 
Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great re reward. Listen, folks, don't give away your confidence. Christ in us is the hope of glory. See yourself as somebody different. We're living proof of the goodness of God. When we couldn't be saved ourselves, he found us. Amen. He helped us. He's our healer, our deliverer, our sanctifier, our, our uh, baptizer in the Holy Ghost. He's everything we need in this life and the life to come. So don't lose your confidence. For you have need of endurance, the scripture says. Endurance. So after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Endurance. Don't quit. Don't give up now. It's not time to quit. You may be at home going through all sorts of things, but begin to say what God says about them. Begin to stand up for what God says and, and begin to proclaim those things. Out of your mouth, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It'll bring life to your situations tonight in Jesus' name. But after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For in a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. You've heard that many times. We're a faith, we're call ourselves a faith church. What's that mean? Faith is alive to me in two places, in your heart and in your mouth. Amen? The faith of God. You have to be saying what God says if you really want to walk by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back. Say it right now with me. I'm not one of those that draws back. Right now, just say it, just say it again. I'm not one of those that draw back <laughs> to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen, we're the people that are going forward, not stopping. We're not gonna, as Neil Childs talked about Sunday, we're not gonna let all these things go on around here in this life, keep us from going forward to what God has, to, has for us to do in this day and this hour. We Forget those little things, amen? Get on with what God has for you. Endurance. I like the, the uh, uh, what it says about endurance. Endurance, consistency, or perseverance, bearing up. Sometimes we have things we have to bear up to, don't we? Now, things we don't like, things that don't uh, that kind of irritate us, and things that uh, really uh, come against us. But we bear up. Steadfast. It describes the capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances, not with a passive complacency, but with a hopeful fortitude that actively resists weariness and defeat. How do we do that tonight? How do we, how do we overcome? How do we endure? How do we keep walking the walk? <laughs> I remember, you remember, you remember Albert, Albert Willis. I don't know if you, years ago, Albert preached here. He's gone on to be in, in, with the Lord in heaven now. But he would say, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And he'd preach, he'd walk across the platform and little things and sing that little song, that little talk about, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And then he'd talk about the things that would come against him, but he'd say, no turning back, no turning back. I love that kind of spirit. But what do we do? How do we do that? Since we are in Hebrews 12, one and two, it tells us something. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. <laughs> now, weights are, could be distractions, just like uh, uh, Neil Childs was talking about. Distractions, things that weigh us down, uh, too much input from the world, and we certainly get that right now. If you're, not, if you're putting more input of the world in your, and most of us are, if you get truth, than what the Word of God says, we're probably going to be weighted down. And it goes on to say, and the sin which so easily snares us. You know, there are things that habits or things that really are, are sinful and, and uh, maybe we don't look at them as sin, but they can hold us back. They can snare us. They can easily come and, and, and grab us. Let us run with endurance. <laughs> Let's run that race. Don't look at somebody else's race. Look at what God says for you to do. And it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Life, life has got a lot of things we have to, to hold up to. Let us run with endurance. The race is set before us. Now, there's a race, my friends, and uh, long distance races isn't my forte, but I'll tell you what, the more you run, the more you're able to run. The more you stand up to the enemy and stand up to the problems of life, the easier it becomes to run to Jesus and get the help you need. Amen? 
Amen. It goes on to say, this is how we do it. Looking unto Jesus, <laughs> the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. How many of you know Jesus endured the cross and endured everything for our sake? For our sake. Hallelujah. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God the Father, at, of the throne of God. And Amplified, it says in that one part, looking away from all that distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. Look up for where our help comes from, amen? Keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our focus on Jesus, as Neil Childs was talking about. Focus on Jesus. Focus on his will. Remember who it's all for, who it's all about. See, we tend to think it's all about us. It's kind of like what little kids, you know, when they're real small, they grow up thinking everything is about them. And we tend to make it about them, unfortunately, too much sometimes. But it's about Jesus. John, over in John 15, or 17, 1 through 5, you can read this for yourself. It talks about uh, the vine and, and the branches. And, and it talks about eternal life is no him, it says, and the glory of him. So we talk about everything centers around him. Our life is not our own. How many of you know we've been bought with a price? The precious blood of Jesus <laughs> you paid a price for us we couldn't pay. Amen? And so we're to surrender our old selves to him. Remember our purpose. What is our purpose? Well, I can give you a good one right now. It's centered around the great commandment. How many of you know the great commandment? If Listen to this, and you've heard it many times. You shall love the Lord your God, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Well, people say sometimes, I love God, and yet they don't live for him. Do you really love him with all your heart? See, it's a heart issue, my friends. So much of our life is a heart issue. And it goes on to say, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I found the more I seek God, the more I love God, the more I find myself going to God, the easier it is to love my brothers and sisters and to remember I love myself. Amen? Amen. That's not a, that's not a, uh, 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 a prideful statement. That's a fact of life. Is If you love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, you'll find it easier to love your enemies, <laughs> love those that despise you, and persecute you, love people, love, that's what it's all about. The great commandment is really all about loving people. Everything, it goes on to say, on these command, two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Everything hangs on love God, love people, love yourself. You'll begin to do, you can do the will of God. You will do the will of God. You will endure. You'll run your race if you keep loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Amen. So it's a singleness of focus. Keep your eyes straight upon him. Launch out with passion for God and for make your priority uh, to drive, uh, the win souls and live for God, amen? Paul says it like this over in the Message Bible in, uh, in uh, Philippians 3, 8 in the Message Bible. All things I once thought were so important are gone from life. How many of you know when you get older, in life, some of those things that you thought were so important when you were young aren't as important anymore. I can guarantee you there are things that, that aren't as important to me anymore when, than when I was 25, 30, 35. Now, it goes on to say, compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ, Jesus as my master, firsthand, firsthand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. I have dumped it all in the trash so I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. It's all about Jesus, my friends. Forgetting those things that lie behind, he pressed on, he said, but he said the things I, that, that I used to think were important, they're not important. I've trashed all that stuff, kept my eyes on Jesus, got my focus right, and I'm enduring to the end. Amen? Amen. Over in John 12, 26, it says this, for any of you wants to serve me, if Jesus speaking here, if any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. <laughs> Can't serve Jesus from afar. Amen. Well, I, you know, I love God. I go to church once in a while. Are you really serving him? 
He says, go ahead and serve him. Then you'll be where I am. Listen, there are places to be where he is. One of them is, is being in church as much as you can or being a part of the body of Christ. I know we're having some issues now. Don't misunderstand. But we're still the body of Christ. You can still be doing the things he's called you to do. Ready to serve at a moment's notice. <laughs> Always on call, right? Always on call. The Father will honor and reward you and, and you and who serves me. Listen, you serve Jesus, you'll be honored and rewarded. Remember what Shackleford said, or Shackleton said when he recruited his men? <laughs> he says, Long, it's going to take a dangerous journey with low wages, lots of darkness, nine months of darkness at least, and you may not return. But he said, if you do, you'll be honored and respected and you'll be rewarded. Well, how many of you know when we serve the Lord, we'll be honored by it. We serve Jesus, we'll be honored by the Heavenly Father. Amen. Over in Luke, Jesus said it was all about what the Father wanted. Luke 2, 49 I must be about my father's business. I mean, you know, that's our, that's our mandate now. That's our, that's what our, we're, that's our marching orders. We need to be about the father's business in this day and this hour. He also said in Luke 22, 42, Father, it is your will. And this is when he was in the garden. I'm in the garden. He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. In other words, this challenge, this, this, uh, the battle he was having in his mind. You know what? He was human. He was all God and all human, but he was having this challenge in his mind about going to the cross. He knew what was coming. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Can we say that tonight? Can we say your will be done, Lord? Listen, it'll pay dividends. Jesus always did the will of the Father. So should we. If we are to finish our race, we must look to Jesus. Over in John 15, uh, 5, part B, he was talking about, I am the uh, vine, you are the branches, and abide in me, and I in you, you'll bear fruit. Well, they, then he says, without me, you can do nothing. We can't do anything without Jesus. Our life will be a struggle. It'll be a loss. It'll be, uh, it, it'll be uh, se about self, serving self, and the God of this world. But with him, hallelujah, we can do all things. That's what scripture says. Living with life of joy, passion, and the beauty and simplicity of serving one Lord. Not two Lords, not the world, but one Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we're closing down, I, I thought of these lyrics. I hadn't heard this song for years. It's a song by uh, Selah. They were a, a, a missionary family that uh, did a lot of singing, a lot of group. And I, if you ever get a chance, look it up. It's called Press On. It says, when the valley is deep, the mountain is steep, when the body is weary, when we stumble and fall, when the choices are hard, when, the, when we're battered and scarred, when we spent our resources, when we've given our all, in Jesus' name, we press on. In Jesus' name, we press on. Dear Lord, with the prize, <laughs> we press on for the prize. Clear before our eyes, we find the strength to press on. We're to run our uh, race with endurance, my friends. Don't give up. Don't back out. Don't let something that you've done or something that somebody has done to you cause you to, to get out of the race. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running hard. And keep running strong. In Jesus' name, press on. Amen? Amen. So let me pray with you tonight just before we get off here. If you're going through something, we just thank the Lord. He's provided all that we need in this life and the life to come. So, Father, we thank you tonight that you've given us strength to press on. You've given us a course to follow. You've given us a race to run. And we do so tonight with your help. That's who we look to, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We press on to the, the mark of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus, to that goal that you've set before us. We thank you tonight. I thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. Maybe they're discouraged. Maybe they're going through something that's pretty hard. I pray you give them the strength that you promised you would to endure and go through and, and just see victory in their life. You are the God that gives us victory. We thank you, Lord, that there anybody out there in pain or hurting or sick, or uh, you've already paid a price for that too. You carried our pains and, and our sicknesses, and by your stripes we've been healed. And so we thank you for deliverance, and we thank you for help. And we just give you all the praise that when this life is over, we'll, <laughs> we'll be rewarded 
and, and sit down there with you and be in your presence forever and ever as we are now you're in our presence now you're in our, we're in your presence now but we thank you for the great way to run this race with endurance and perseverance and we give you all the praise for that in Jesus name be blessed tonight keep lifting him up if you lift him up he's guaranteed to lift you up so we'll see you next week we'll check in on Sunday if you can get here be do so if you can't Make sure you get on the live stream. It's been good. Praise and worship has been good. And, and the messages have been great. So we'll see you next time. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.